I am Jennifer Johnson. I am one of the strategic sales managers for Stalls. I actually cover uh, the Tola region, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Um, thank you everybody for joining me on this Monday afternoon. I hope all of you had a great 4th of July holiday. Um, we are gonna be covering overcoming common heat printing challenges. I love to make my webinars interactive, so feel free to ask questions. I have my partner, Stacy. She's going to be behind the scenes uh, helping me um, through some of the videos and some of the links. She'll also be manning the chat box. So feel free to ask questions. She'll answer them. She may chime in um, every once in a while and have me ask a question out loud and, and answer it. I feel like that really helps. But um, And then when we get to the end of the webinar today, I'll kind of look through all the chats. And if there are any questions that were unanswered, I can certainly go through those with everybody. So let's get started. So challenge number one, this is a big one that I hear more often than not is the design isn't staying isn't staying on the garment okay so three main things you guys need to do first and foremost you need to confirm that the heat transfer vinyl that you're using or the screen printed transfer that you're using or the sublimated transfer that you're using is compatible with the garment type that you're using and spe more specifically the fabric type. Um, I am going to have Stacy post in the chat a link to our material compatibility PDF. For those of you um, that can see that there in the chart, she or chat, she just posted it there. Open it, copy it, save it to your files. That is a great reference to easily refer back to. Now that's going to only have um, our heat transfer vinyl products and what they're compatible, what fabrics they're compatible with, but that's a really handy PDF to refer back to. If you're like, ooh, I'm working with a, you know, a tri-blend, I can't quite remember which uh, HTV, which heat transfer vinyl to use, you can easily reference back to that. So definitely a handy little tool, but I can't express enough how important it is to make sure that the product you're using is compatible with the fabric that you have. More often than not, we find people using a fabric that isn't compatible with the product they're using. And they call us and they panic and they're going, oh my God, this is falling off. This isn't working. What am I doing wrong? And when we get down to the root cause, sometimes it's just a matter of that. Second most important thing, always, always review your application instructions. I walk into so many shops where people are, you know, just kind of willy nilly. Oh, well, I kind of guessed or, oh, well, I use this application setting for all my products. I hear that a lot and I get it. You know, you, you guys are busy people. You might be having a side business. This might be out of your home. You've got kids at home, pets, the phone's ringing. But please, you guys, you really have to follow the application instructions that are re recommended for the specific vinyl that you're using or for the specific screen printed transfer that you're using. Um, I always tell people it's like baking a cookie or baking a cake. If you don't follow the recipe, your product, your outcome probably isn't gonna be all that good. It's the same with heat transfers. If you're not following the application instructions, it might look okay. You might do your little scratch test, you know, with your, your nail and going, well, this looks pretty good. But the minute somebody goes and wears that garment or washes that garment, you could have a real problem if you did not follow the application settings. Um, it can start to pop, crack, peel, and, and fall off. So that's really important. I am um, going to have Stacy post or copy and paste um, our PDF application instructions for everybody. Again, I highly recommend you guys save those. It's a great tool to easily reference. We always stick application instructions in every order that we ship, um, but they're also in our catalog. At the back of our catalog, you can find them, and they're on our website as well. Um, so we, we really um, pride ourselves on making sure that we advertise application instructions in almost all areas on our website, in our print catalogs, in our webinars. It's really, really important. Third thing. 
you could potentially have a cold spot on your heat press. For those of you that don't have a Hotronics heat press, it's okay, we understand, you know, people have to start out somewhere. And, and oftentimes, you know, if you just don't have the budget for, you know, a really durable industrial grade heat press, you might, you know, get into an imp what we call an import press or something like that. Um, you oftentimes can get cold spots. A lot of the times the upper heating elements are manufactured in what we call quadrants or X bars and certain portions of those actually can go out and cause cold spots and you don't know it. So I always tell people, go to Home Depot. I believe they sell them at Walmart, Amazon, get yourself a temperature gun. It's a laser gun. Uh, they range, but get a good quality one. They're about $90, $100, somewhere in there. They're a great little tool to have in your toolbox and they're infrared. So you can read the temperature of your upper heating element. You point them straight at the top, hold it still, hold the button in, and it will tell you what the temperature is. Um, so, you know, make sure that you guys pick up one of those and you should be good to go. All right, challenge number two. This is a really, really common one. You know, when people are first starting out, oftentimes people will deal with only really simple garments, crew neck t-shirts, you know, the, the, the basics. But as your business grows and as your client base grows and as you start to get more, um, as you start to get into more complex garments or you start offering a wider range of items, bags, backpacks, jackets, like this, this full zip jacket here, well, now look what you're dealing with. You're dealing with zippers, potentially buttons, heavy seams, collars, all of those things impede a nice smooth application. If you can envision, you know, sticking this jacket on a 16 inch by 20 inch platen, well, now you've got this zipper in the way and what's gonna make contact first when you go to sandwich the heat press together is the zipper. And you're gonna potentially melt your zipper and you're gonna cause what we what we call a valley um, and it won't you, you won't be able to apply your heat transfer very well. So we've got a, a bunch of wonderful tools that you all definitely should invest in and have in your toolbox. Um, first is what we call heat printing pillows and print perfect pads. I'm gonna have Stacy paste links to both of these products, both of the landing pages on our website so you guys can easily find them. Heat printing or pillows are great. They're a foam pillow with a Teflon cover that you can just slide inside the jacket and it helps absorb the shock of the pressure so that the zipper can kind of fall into the pillow and not melt or crack or break under the pressure of the heat press. So again, heat printing pillows are a great tool to have, especially if you don't have a heat press with interchangeable platens. If you're just dealing with a little, you know, hobby press, heat printing pillows are a great weapon to have in your uh, toolbox or in your arsenal. Another one is what we call print perfect pads. They're actually a thicker, more solid silicone pad. Um, they're great for sliding in. I love using them for left chest. We've got a sleeve one that we make. I love using those for sleeves if you're gonna decorate sleeves, pant legs, anything kind of unusual. Great little tool to have. I always tell people, um, purchase the largest one that we offer, and then you can cut it to size with a razor blade. Uh, you literally just get yourself a little, you know, exacto knife, and you can cut those puppies to size. I have a whole box of different size ones that I keep, and because inevitably I'll need them for something. So, great thing to to use. Um, the next thing I want to talk about are adjusting your platen size. Now, for those of you that don't have a heat press with interchangeable platens, this one won't apply to you. But for those of you that have a Hotronics, interchangeable platens are gold. I just can't tell you how easy it'll make your life to have a Hotronics heat press with interchangeable platens. Um, they just make decorating items like this full zip 
a jacket or pocketed hoodies or um, button down polos makes decorating a breeze. I am going to have Stacy launch a really quick video on interchangeable platens just so you all have a visual of exactly what I'm talking about in these uh, with these interchangeable platens. They make it really, really easy. Big, uh, types of so apparel. So you can that, see here, this is our popular, fusion. We've got Bob. And, you guys the, might, uh, if you watch a lot of our videos, you might be community. familiar with Bob there. So he's popping he's in a, a little six by zip. 10 interchangeable platen. And then he's so this able is a to case load where I actually unique have, items like um, bags, a left zipper chest. To go off see right here, he's got and a quarter zip jacket. And that's going to give me my best alignment. So he's going to open up the jacket, thread the jacket on. That's called threading. And look at that. With the now his the zipper falls off the platen. So all I have to he doesn't know get now a zipper is in his way. One, he doesn't get his seam in his way. And now he's and able two, to do how far a down left chest logo with here. greater ease. He's so really, really easy um, to, to decorate with interchangeable platens. All right. OK, so third challenge. Alignment. We've all been there, right? You know, I see so many people really struggle with lining their transfers up straight on their garments. Oftentimes, I'll, you know, go into a shop or somebody will come into our Irving showroom and my gosh, they're spending two, three, five minutes lining a transfer up onto a garment. Really honestly, guys, Time is money. If you are a side business or a home-based business or a full-fledged shop, you know every minute counts, you know? It, so you should not be spending, uh, I mean, more than 30, 40 seconds max lining up your items. Now, there's going to be certain items that are going to require a little bit more work, like a name. You know, if you're doing our individual letters or, or small numbers, lining those up takes a little bit more time. But really, truly, you shouldn't be taking minutes to line up transfers. Um, you're really starting to eat into your profitability at that point. So a couple of great tools that we've got. So laser alignment system, you can see there on our uh, equipment cart right next to our auto clam, that little unit, you just plug it in. It's a great little tool to help you, help guide you in lining things up. I'm going to have Stacy launch a quick little video so that you guys can see how the laser alignment system works. Super easy. And I will mute the the gal talking. For as consistent soon as, uh, placement we get of a that player's running. name and number on the All back right. of a jersey, so it includes set the top four back adjustable guideline lights. for the name. Then set there a laser see, one inch below the top them. back template. It includes that the center alignment guideline guide is also right there. helpful to keep everything so, and precisely centered. We've got a centered. ton of different Place the letters uh, and numbers along the lines names, for accurate positioning. Numbering, left chest, and you can see she's using the lasers to line up her name and line up her uh, two digit. Um, her two digit number makes it super, super easy. Uh, another one that we've got is our lettering layout guide. I'm going to have Stacy paste a link to the lettering uh, layout guide here in the chat so you guys can easily find that on our website. Great little tool to have. I highly recommend you guys have that in your arsenal. It just helps. Again, if you're doing sports jerseys and you're doing a lot of names and numbering, things like that, left chest is a really tricky one for people. Heck, I've been doing this for a lot of years. Left chest is still a tricky one for me. So, um, you know, just a great little uh, tool to have. And then the third one, we created a whole ebook on design size so kind of generic recommended design sizes for adult youth um, adult large adult small and placement ebook so i'm gonna have stacy post that in the chat box as well i definitely definitely recommend you guys open that up save it to your documents so you can easily reference it great little tool to have um, we we create these things oh my, all the time because um, we're really honestly here to you know help set you guys up for success so challenge number four we've all been through it the transfer moves during application you know if you're using a heat transfer vinyl that doesn't have a sticky carrier or you're using a screen printed transfer inevitably you know that that transfer might shift 
while you're trying to line it up. Um, it can and it can be a real nuisance, a real struggle. So we have got this handy dandy thermo tape. I literally tell people keep rolls of it. It's cheap. I mean, I think it's, uh, I don't know, around $8 a roll, super cheap. Get yourself a little thermo uh, tape dispenser. I think we sell them for 17 bucks. Great little tool to have in your toolbox because what you can do is, um, or what it does is it doesn't leave any residue. So you just tape it right over the transfer, you just tape it onto the garment, holds everything in place, and it's great. You just lift it up when you need to go remove the transfer and there is no residue on your fabric. Now I will see people try to save money by um, taking tiny little pieces of the tape and taping each little corner of the transfer. Guys, this stuff is cheap. Just, I tell people, by the time you, you, you know, spend all the time to tape off every little corner of your transfer, you've just, you know, again, it's profitability. Time is money. Just take one big strip of it and just lay it right across the, the whole transfer. So it's on the left and the right side or the top and the bottom side. Really, truly, the amount of time, uh, money you're saving versus your time it's just much easier to use a little bit of extra tape. So that's just a little trick. The next thing, um, apologies for the, the typo here. We have it as high tack magic mask strips, but we actually, it's called pre-mask tape. Um, that's the way you find it on our website, but Stacey will paste it here in the chat box as well. Um, so this is great because it's clear. So I love it when I'm lining up names on sports jerseys. You just line up your name, you lay your tape down, it, the whole name sticks to the tape, and then you can lift the tape up and place it on your garment. Makes it really handy for doing names. I love it for names. Um, I saw somebody, Jesse, said, is there any difference between the thermo tape and the heat transfer tape? I'm not sure what you mean, but I believe that is the same thing. So thermo tape is heat transfer tape. Um, really the key is you don't want any residue left on your fabric. So um, Kevin posted, great for doing hats and sublimation. Could not agree with you more. <laughs> well, um, if any of you guys have played around with any of our new dimensional emblems, like our leather patches, our embroidered patches, our flex style, they're not tacky, they're not sticky. So when you're trying to lay them down on a hat, it's really hard to get them so that they, they don't shift around. Thermotape is so handy for that. So definitely check that out. Get your guy, you know, get yourself a couple of rolls, keep it in your, uh, you know, your shop or your house. It's, it's a great um, little tool to have. Next up, challenge number five, application error. So we have all been there, right? Oh my God, I misspelled Johnson. Or, oh my gosh, I put the wrong number on. Or I put a six as a nine, right? And you need to get that stuff off. So we have a product called Letter Remover Solvent. Um, it's an Albuquerque product. It works wonders. I'm going to have Stacy launch a little video so you guys can see it. And I apologize if these videos aren't muting. Um, this one's a quick one. To make sure there's no fading in the garment, make sure to test Hopefully the solvent it's first muted in for an you guys, but you can spot. see she's going I've chosen from the, the inside arm. of the garment. You just get a little cotton cloth. You dab that stuff on the cotton cloth rub it from the inside. Now I'll moisten my cloth and begin and to wet the back of the And what it does is it allows liner. the adhesive to make sure I only get the T, enough, not the rest of my design. I'm using my hand on the front as a guide. that little T off. Hopefully you guys can all um, see that and hear me. It's, this is, if you guys aren't familiar with this stuff or don't have any, run, don't walk, run to Once get the this back stuff. of the letter is moistened, it is amazing. I can begin to peel off it's the not expensive. The I think it's tw around 20 bucks a, a canister. You can see that there. Sorry, everybody, if it wasn't muted. I know that's a huge pain. We, uh, sometimes we have some uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> Um, but that is a great little tool to have. 
Um, for those of you that are more experienced, possibly you've had a shop or your screen printers, um, there are also some chemicals out there. We do not sell them. Stalls does not endorse them, stand behind them. This is just from one, uh, you know, printing expert to another. There are some spray removers out there. You get like a spray, um, it's a spray bottle with a, a chemical and those will take off things like screen printed transfers, things like that. But you guys definitely need to check that out on your own. Um, but those are some more great items to kind of have in your arsenal. Um, Cindy just asked, does this work the same on heat transfer vinyl? It does, Cindy. Um, it really depends, though, what heat transfer vinyl you're working with. Um, and some of them will leave a residue, unfortunately. Um, Mitch, yep, you're right. There is a residue. Oftentimes, if you're dealing like with white, white polyester can tend to leave more of a residue than other polyesters. If the polyesters have been coated with something, sometimes the interaction with the coating on and the chemical remover, they just don't jive and they'll leave a little bit of a residue. So you always want to make sure you test. You probably are going to have to use one of your garment, you know, as a guinea pig and test ahead, ahead of time. Um, you also saw the woman in the video was not wearing gloves. I highly recommend you all wear gloves when you use this stuff. It's just, it's strong, it's potent, it's a chemical. Um, David, yep, he posts dangerous for the skin. I always recommend wearing gloves uh, for this kind of stuff. So it just, it just helps. It's, it's a good uh, practice to get into. Um, Michael asks, do you have to wash the area that you need the solvent on before applying a new transfer. Um, you don't, Michael, you can apply a new transfer over the top, but again, you just want to make sure if there's any residue there or anything, you know, you just have to be a little bit careful. Um, works great on names and numbers. What I recommend if you guys have made a boo-boo in using like a full color transfer or a screen printed transfer, I always recommend a cover-up. Screen printed transfers can get really messy trying to remove them. Um, depending on the adhesives and where you're getting the transfers, it, it can be a real nightmare. So I would always pitch to the customer a cover-up before trying to remove a screen printed transfer. And by cover-up, literally, truly a cover-up transfer. You create it slightly larger than the transfer that's on there. Um, and we've got a, a lot of transfers that I would recommend. CAD prints is a great one to use as cover-up. Uh, Transfer Express's AquaTrue is a great one to use as a cover-up. Um, so again, it's it all kind of boils down to the project, the transfer, the garment, but you guys are more than welcome. If you ever have that issue, you can email me directly and I can help kind of walk you through it. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat box for any of you guys that possibly need it. Post it there, jennifer.johnson at stalls.com. It's a great one. Um, let's see what other questions you have. That was kind of a, a quick web webinar, but let's see. Helen posts, sometimes she finds it easier just to do a new t-shirt. Absolutely right, Helen. I mean, if you guys are using a three to five dollar t-shirt, scrap the shirt and buy yourself a new shirt. You know, if you're dealing with a 40 or 50 dollar uh, Nike quarter zip, uh, pullover, that's a different story. You might not, you know, you might want to try to salvage that, that pullover. Um, Barb, yes, the, this webinar will be emailed to all of you. A copy of, of the webinar will be emailed to all of you. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. Hey, Jennifer. Yeah. I did flag some questions earlier in your presentation that hopefully you'd be able to cover. There is one from Dave. He was looking to purchase a Fusion IQ, but wanted to know if um, he could do a larger Chrome Alux panel, 24 and above. Um, so I wasn't sure if you wanted to answer that one. And then sure. there was also one too from Liz. Sure. So Dave, I do see your question there. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, if you're dealing with something that's larger than our largest heat press, which is a 16 inch by 20 inch 
footprint or platen, you would have to do it in sections. And you just need to get, you just need to be really careful with that because if you're doing it in sections and you're applying right through the vinyl or right through the screen printed transfer or right through the sublimation transfer, whatever it is, you typically will see a line or a crease. So it really boils down to your artwork, the type of product you're applying. Um, but yes, you can do things in sections. Um, and no, we, we don't offer anything larger than a 16 by 20 footprint or platen size, if you will. Uh, Liz asks, how much time does it take for, for it to heat up from 380? I'm not sure I if think I'm... She, I think she meant Hattronics. So she wants to know how roughly how long would it take for the machine to heat up from off to 380 degrees? Oh, got it. Got it. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, okay. So Liz, that's going to boil down to the size of your heat press. If you're dealing with maybe our six inch six inch by six inch, no time at all. It would take a very little um, 10 minutes to heat up. Um, it really boils down to how large the heating element is. Um, but if you're dealing with our 16 by 20 Hotronics, you're probably looking at about 15, 20 minutes to heat up to 380. Um, the great thing about our Fusion IQs, so if any of you have our Fusion IQ, you know that now the new IQs actually tell you how many minutes are left till it heats up to where you need it to heat up. So if you set it for 380, it will say you have 15 minutes until it gets to 380, which is great because if you're a home-based business or you're multitasking, which we all are, uh, you can step away, you can go do some other things, and then you know you can come back in 15 minutes and it will be heated to temp. Um, so that's a great one. Let's see what else we've got. Kevin writes, the four inch by four inch platen is godsend. I could not agree with you more, Kevin. I love our little four inch by four inch. It makes doing left chest, back yoke, little sleeve logo so, so easy. Um, so if you guys have a Hotronics and you haven't played around with our interchangeable platens, definitely recommend checking out all of our interchangeable platens. Um, Yes, also great for decorating masks. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are doing masks right now. So let's see what other questions you guys might have for me. Amy asks, how do you avoid the box left on the shirt after using the pillow? So Amy, what that's going to boil down to is a couple of factors. And it could not be just one. It could be a combination of these. So could be a little too much pressure is being used. It could be you're using the wrong heat transfer vinyl or the wrong screen printed transfer for your fabric type. Oftentimes, anything with synthetic in it, so polyester, uh, nylon, rayon, lycra, spandex, things like that are really sensitive to heat and they need products that apply at a much lower temperature. And by much lower temperature, we're talking like 250, 265, maybe 275 or 280 would be okay. Um, but sometimes if you're getting a box mark or a platen mark or a bruise mark or a scorch mark, you're gonna need to change your product, meaning you're the actual heat transfer product you're using. Uh, you might have to look into what we call power platens or lower heated technology so that you can reduce that top temperature really, really low. Um, so, you know, definitely looking at those things if you're dealing with a lot of synthetic materials like polyesters and, and things like that. Um, let's see, Cindy writes, my cheapy heat press knocks out my breaker every few minutes. Any solution? Yeah, get rid of your cheapy heat press. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you know, those heat presses, you know, I hate to say bad things about other people's products because we wouldn't want people saying bad things about our products, but you really truly get what you pay for when you're, when you're dealing with little import presses. They're just not quality made. Um, that's why they're so cheap, right? They use cheap parts. They're not meant to last. So Cindy, I highly recommend you look into a good quality American made heat press, um, that won't, uh, 
knock out your, your breaker or, you know, you might need to look into your electrical as well. Um, doing masks, having problems keeping the lettering on. Uh, Maureen, you might, it might be depending on the mask because there's seams on your mask and the seams are causing a valley to keeping your heat transfer vinyl from having nice good adhesion. So you might need to get a print perfect pad to bump up the mask or like the heat printing pillow or you might have to get a, a lower interchangeable platen, like a little four by four to, to get those seams of the masks to fall off the platen. Likely that could be what's happening there. Um, so check that out. Uh, Tim asks, tips on keeping a full wrap print from sublimating socks in place. Oh, for sublimating socks in place. So Tim, oftentimes what you need to do with your sublimation is you need to go larger than the socks. Socks are really, really hard to decorate because they're ribbed. They're usually ribbed and it's hard for the sublimation to get into the valleys of the ribbing. So when you go to pull the sock or stretch the socks, you know, now you've warped your image because that image hasn't had a chance to get into the ribbing. So sometimes you need to you need to create something that expands the sock enough so that when you apply the sublimation, you're getting into the valleys of the sock. Um, hope that helps answer that a little bit. Michael, any tips for reducing scorching? So we did a whole webinar on this. Um, for, for heat sensitive fabrics and what to use when. So I highly recommend you guys go to our um, education landing page. Stacy, maybe you can um, uh, post a link here in the chat for everybody. But we've done a, a, quite a few webinars in the last month or so on reducing scorch marks, eliminating scorching and bruising and what to use when. Really it boils down to making sure you pick the right product for your fabric. Um, and getting that top temperature down low enough so that you're not, so that you're eliminating or preventing or reducing your scorch marks. Yep, Alan, same thing, tips on, on preventing scorch marks. So guys, I can't recommend enough if you guys have not checked out our new product, Ultra Weed. It's our newest heat transfer vinyl. Run to our website and order some samples. It's amazing and it applies at 265 degrees. Nice low temperature, ideal for those heat sensitive uh, fabrics like performance polyester. Now I will admit there are some polyesters out there that will scorch even at 265. You know, typically those, the threshold is about 250 degrees. So if that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to look into top and bottom heat. We offer our power platens that are interchangeable with our brand of uh, heat press, the Hotronics. So you can check that out. I get creases in my cap crown. How do I eliminate or minimize those? John, that's a great question. So unfortunately with the original models of heat presses, whether it's a Hotronics or another brand, it's almost inevitable that you're gonna get those crease marks. Um, we have come out with a new cap press called a 360 IQ. We're taking pre-orders for them now. They're shipping in September. So for those of you guys that haven't checked that out, check that out on our websites. Maybe Stacy can uh, paste a link here to the 360 so you guys have easy reference, um, but completely revolutionizing how you can decorate headwear. Um, we've reconfigured the bottom mold, so now you no longer get those crease marks. You can decorate any size hat on one platen, and we've incorporated top and bottom heat, so you're no longer scorching your headwear. And you can do dimensional emblems like patches and all sorts of great things. Carmen, you're having trouble with the metallic heat transfer vinyl staying on the polyester garment. Hmm. Carmen, email me jennifer.johnson at stalls.com and I'll try to help troubleshoot with you, troubleshoot that with you offline. Um, maybe we can dial in what might be going on. Maybe there's a coating on your polyester or, or something's going on there. Um, but email me on the side and, and I'll help you out with that. Denise asks if we can resend the links um, that we mentioned earlier. Um, Sure, I'm, I'm hoping Stacy can post those links again for you. Yep, I did. I linked everything back. Great. 
How do we get around the transfer outline when pressing? That's Roger. I'm assuming you mean the square box or the square rectangle of the carrier. Oftentimes, Roger, um, that's a combination of things. Again, you know, might need to back off on the pressure just slightly. You might have the wrong product for the material that you're using. So you might need to switch up the product so that you're not getting those box marks. Um, so it might be a few things that you might need to try on that. Great. Okay, so Samuel posts, should a V-neck men's and ladies tees be done on a regular 16 by 20 or on a six by 10? So with V-neck, Samuel, depending on the size of your image, I actually really like our 11 by 15 platen. I love doing it in not only uh, portrait mode, which is the regular mode, but changing it and putting it into landscape mode is also a really great option. You just, again, it really depends on your image size, but I love our 11 by 15 platen. It's a great platen. 16 by 20 might be a little tricky depending on how big the ladies' tees are. It might be a little hard to thread a ladies, you know, small onto a 16 by 20 without stretching it out too much. All right, let's see. Okay, so Sharon asks, how do you suggest the box issue when you're applying rhinestones when you press at 330? So Sharon, um, Deborah, right below you, I believe, posted the flexible application pad. That's a great tool. I didn't mention that here, but that's another great tool that you guys can check out. It's a gray, flexible pad obviously reusable, but what you guys need to remember with that is it's thick and it's um, it acts as a barrier for the heat getting through it. So you need to double your application time when you're using a flexible application pad um, or increase it by 10 seconds. I like to double it. So for example, if, if the application instructions say 10 seconds, I go to 20 seconds. If the application instructions say 15 seconds, I go to 30 seconds. Because you just need to make sure you allow a little bit more time, but that is a great tool. Thanks, Deborah, for um, mentioning that one. Or again, like I said, finding another product that is more compatible with the fabric that you're using. Jill Johnson asks, what's a good starter heat press with interchangeable platens? Jill, email me, jennifer.johnson at stalls.com, and I'll send you all the good information on a great starter heat press with interchangeable platens based on um, your budget and your needs, that sort of thing. Use the pillow for making masks. Yep, Kevin, you're absolutely right. Use those pillows. They're great. What pressure setting is considered light, medium, and firm? Our press goes by PSI. So Michael, if you have a Hotronics, I can definitely guide you. But if you don't have a Hotronics, I'm, you know, take this with a grain of salt. Um, but light, I would consider to be about 20 to 35 pounds of pressure. Medium would be about 36 to 49 pounds or no, mm, oof, 60 pounds of pressure, and then firm would be anything over 60 pounds of pressure. Um, that's when you start to get real firm. Very rarely when you're dealing with an automatic uh, heat press with PSI, compressed air, should you be using more than 60, 65 pounds of pressure. Um, that gets really, really high. Uh, really, there shouldn't be a whole lot of products out there that are going to require that amount of pressure. Um, Colleen, I am not sure if we have any videos available for uh, sublimating socks. You're going to want to check out Stalls TV, or Deborah actually just posted a, a link there on um, videos, and you can sort. Um, and you can just type in sublimating socks and see if we've got anything that might pop up. Let's see. Is there any way to get the seams sublimated for koozies? Koozies are a real tricky one, Liz. Unfortunately, you just have to kind of be patient and line up the front and the back. You're going to get that little seam in there unless there's a way for you to decorate it before what we call cut and sew. But if you're dealing with already cut and sewn koozies, that, unfortunately, that's a limitation to sublimating koozies like that.
Um, Fawn, you can either call into our customer service line or you can call Hotronics customer service to see if your press is interchangeable. Basically what they'll need is the serial number on the side of the Hotronics autoclam to see if it, if it does have interchangeable platen capability. Um, we don't offer any trade-ins for uh, presses, but we do have really high resale value on uh, platforms like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, things like that. So you might want to check out trying to uh, sell your press that way. Will it hurt to press the heat transfer of vinyl two times? Maureen, uh, great question. No, it, it won't. Most vinyl is very, very forgiving, way more forgiving than screen printed transfers. I always tell people it can take a licking and keep on ticking. So don't stress about pressing your vinyl two times. I definitely wouldn't uh, press it, you know, three, four, five times. At that point, you're, you're over curing the adhesive, but pressing heat trans transfer vinyl two times shouldn't hurt the transfer vinyl. What was the name of that transfer? I think you guys are talking about the ultra weed, or D Denise, are you talking about the ultra weed? Ultra weed heat transfer vinyl on our website. You can find it really easily there. Cindy asks, what is the favorite poly cotton t-shirt for sublimation? I would never recommend a poly cotton t-shirt for sublimation. I would always sublimate on 100% polyester. Um, that is the the way to go with doing sublimation successfully and getting that richness and vibrancy and color. Um, so I would definitely recommend sticking with 100% poly shirt. So um, Patrice asks, if you're putting a heat press vinyl design and have a piece that accidentally gets pressed, like a thin piece that was on the border of the design and didn't get weeded, what's the best way to get that, uh, that vinyl off? Okay, so that's when you're gonna wanna use that solvent remover, Patrice. I would suggest taking a, um, a, a Q-tip, a little Q-tip, just dabbing a tiny little bit on the Q-tip and just getting just that little piece off. Again, you're going to go from the inside or the back side of the, of the transfer, so the inside of the fabric, right? Just get a little bit on there and then you should get your nail on there and be able to just kind of scrape that little piece right off. That That's happened to me before where I've forgotten to weed out something or a little edge is still stuck on there and I inevitably press it onto my fabric. So um, make sure you do that. Great, lots of questions today, guys. That's great. Um, you know the proper size to make the word. When printing images or words, how do you know the proper size to make the words or images? So Danielle, there was a link that I post that um, my partner pasted in the chat here. So we have a whole design guide reference ebook. We have done a lot of the, we've taken a lot of the guesswork out of it for you because really it boils down to if you're dealing with oversized adults, maybe smaller ladies, maybe youth, maybe toddler, maybe infants. So it really depends on the size of the garment is going to be dependent on the size of your image or your wording, things like that. So check out that ebook, a lot of great tips and tricks and sizing that we have referenced in there for you. Yes, Alicia, the webinar is over. I'm just kind of doing a Q&A right now. So if, if some of you need to go, we totally understand and we so appreciate you guys joining us today. If you want to stick around a little bit longer and have me go through a few more Q&A, um, you're welcome to stick around. Let's see. Um, Linda, can you do a handout with all of the links mentioned? Um, so they're pasted in here in the chats. Um, we can possibly send, well, you're going to get a copy of this webinar. So you can listen back anytime. And I believe when you listen back, I'm not sure, but I believe the chat will also populate there and then you can reference those links anytime or go to our website. You can type in things in the search bar and, and the links should populate for you there. Or you can always email me jennifer.johnson at stalls.com and I can help you as well. Brian, 360 still has crease issues on the crown, especially on foam trucker hats. Brian, have you called into customer service or reached out to Josh Ellsworth at all on your 360? Um, if not, you're welcome to email me and I'll, we'll, we'll troubleshoot that together and help get you dialed in because you should 
definitely not be getting crease marks on those trucker hats. Um, I've personally done a ton of trucker hats on the new 360 and with really good success. So we'll, we'll try to get you squared away and dialed in there. You're welcome to reach out to me or like I said, our customer service department's there to help as well. Uh, Maureen asks, would you consider Stahl's fashion film good for masks, 100% cotton? Absolutely, Maureen. It's a great product for cotton. It's also a great product for polyester. Nice and affordable, easy to cut and weed, tons of colors. I love our fashion film. Um, you know, if you were dealing with maybe a 100% polyester mask, fashion film does apply at a slightly higher temperature. So, you know, that's when you might want to check out something like the Ultra Weed, which applies at a nice low temperature. Um, but for 100% cotton mask, fashion film, great, great solution for that. Um, Tony uh, uh, posts, would you would like to hear more about applying transfers to rain jackets? So we've got a ton of videos, you guys, on applying to coated nylons, coated polyesters, rain wear. You just need to ensure that you're picking a heat transfer vinyl or a full color transfer that's compatible with the rain jacket. Um, a lot of those coatings act as kryptonite to adhesives, heat transfer adhesives. So making sure that you guys pick the right heat transfer vinyl is going to be crucial to decorating those types of rain jackets. Um, you're welcome to email me. I can give you more information on that. Another little uh, tool that you guys might want to consider getting, it's called denatured alcohol. Uh, you can pick it up at Walmart. Amazon, Uline, Lowe's, Home Depot. It's not rubbing alcohol. It's called denatured alcohol. You just lightly mist, put it in a little spray bottle, lightly mist just the area you're going to apply to, and it wicks away um, the coating just enough to allow the transfer to bond. But you still need to make sure that transfer is the adhesive is the right compatibility for the rain jacket. Typically, rain jackets are either coated poly or coated nylon. Um, what's my email? It's jennifer.johnson at stalls.com and I'll um, post it in the chat box again for y'all. Great. Everybody, you're so welcome. I'm, I'm so glad you guys um, joined me today. I really appreciate everybody taking time out to join me. Um, I'll stick around for those of you that want to stick around and I can answer a few more questions. Ha Colleen, this is a great question. How do you remove the residue off the top platen of the Hotronics heat press? Fantastic question. We have all done it where you have applied a transfer upside down and now it's ruined your upper heating element. Turn the press off, let it cool down just enough so it's warm, but obviously doesn't burn you. Um, get a little mild dish soap, Dove, Dawn, any mild non-abrasive dish soap on a cotton cloth and just rub it off, work it off like you're washing your baby or something. Don't scrape it, don't use a tool, don't use a knife, don't use a chisel. It's Teflon, like your pots and pans, it will, you will scrape the Teflon off. Don't even use your nail, you know, your thumbnail. Just a nice cotton cloth. You're going to have to work at it a little bit. You know, might you might have to have multiple cloths because if it's like uh, plastisol ink, it can get really gooey and gummed up, but it'll work itself off. You just mild dish soap, warm water, and you're good to go. And a light warmth on the on the press. Uh, you should be you should be good to go. Just don't scrape it with any tools. Is there a grid for cricket cutting settings for ultra weed? So Liz, um, Jenna, our kind of our face of stalls, has done a ton of videos. I believe she's using a cricket or a cameo, and she's played with ultra weed. Oh my gosh, she has done so many live events, Facebook live events in the last couple weeks, months since ultra weed has been launched. Check those out. Um, cause I'm, I'm fairly certain she's got a lot of settings in that she goes over in there that you, you can easily find. So check those out. How do you feel about buying patches and then having them stitched on hats? So swim print, um, asked that question. Well, swim print with our patches, you actually don't have to stitch them. They're adhesive only. And with the 360 cap press, 
man, you're cooking with Crisco. So they're adhesive only, no need to stitch them. You can actually order them with marrowed edges. Um, they're beautiful. They're just beautiful. And they save you so much time. If you're an embroiderer, for those of you that have embroidery machines and you embroider headwear, I please do yourselves a favor and check out this 360 cap press and all of our dimensional emblems. It's a game changer. It is truly a game changer for how you can decorate headwear. And now you've just opened up your embroidery machines for other things. Um, you know, for those of you that do puff embroidery, you know how painstaking and time consuming it is. Check out our 3D embroidered patches. They're amazing, totally amazing. Um, let's see, what else? <laughs> Somebody posted they have kids running around their house. I know the feeling, I get it. <laughs> it's the new normal, right? Um, let's see what else we've got here. What I do, oops, I just lost it. What I do use high temp tape, a Teflon sheet to the top flatten to avoid fouling the upper part. Yes, absolutely. So Teflon cover sheets, if you guys haven't been using those, I love them. I also love our craft paper. Um, great, easy little tools to, to have in your arsenal as well. So Jeff is posting a question about a competitor's product. These are easy weed stretch. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that, Jeff. That's not our product. Um, so I wouldn't be able to help you out there, but I highly recommend, Jeff, you check out our Premium Plus. It's a better product. It's a more cost-effective product. It's just a dream. So Premium Plus high tech, and it is compatible with top and bottom heat. So check, check that out. Um, George, you missed this, the webinar, no problem. You will get an emailed uh, link, uh, recorded link to the webinar. So you can view it anytime. Jeff, yay, I'm so happy you have the 360 press. That's awesome. Um, Sally says she embroiders a lot of hats and she can't wait to get her hat press. Oh, you're gonna love it, Sally. It's so awesome, so, so awesome. And Jeff, just make sure you try the Premium Plus high tack. We have a high tack and a low tack. You're going to love the high tack. Super easy, great product. Um, where can I buy printable blank masks? Poly front. We do have, I believe, a couple of masks at transferexpress.com. Check those out. You can check out Sanmar um, and I believe SNS. All the big bl uh, blank apparel manufacturers, I believe, now are, are um, manufacturing masks and you might want to check out Fossa Apparel, F-O-S-S-A. They've got a great poly uh, mask. Uh, Swim Print says, can you add a link for the hat product you were talking about? Sure. Hopefully um, Stacy or Deborah can post a link to the 360 cat press and all of our dimensional products. Okay, so David asks a very good question. So he is using our goof proof transfers. They're a screen printed transfer at Transfer Express. They apply at 365 degrees for four to five seconds. And he's asking them, he has leftover. He's asking them, asking me if he can put them on a poly T. David, I, unfortunately, you're going to need to test one. Uh, you know, depending on the poly T, it might be a little too heat sensitive for that for that goof proof. Just so you know, goof proof has an alternate setting. You can try 340 degrees for eight to 10 seconds. Okay, 340, eight to 10 seconds. Try that. 340 though might still be a little too high of a temperature for those poly tees. It's really going to boil down to what poly tee that is. Not all polyester is created equal. So um, anything else? Let's see. I think that's it. Like I said, guys, if you have any questions you want to ask me offline, feel free to email me. Um, you know, I'm happy to help. I, we so appreciate you guys joining us today. Hope you guys got a little bit of uh, information from the webinar and we look forward to the next one. Thanks so much. Have a great week and 
Yeah. Oh, Colleen, one more question. What is a good reflective heat transfer vinyl to apply on the back of a jacket? So Colleen, it's going to depend on the fabric type of the jacket, um, but we've got 3M reflective and we've got a reflective two, Roman numeral two. Um, so check both of those out. You just want to make sure uh, what fabric content the jacket is. If it's nylon, coated polyester, that sort of thing. But check out those two products. We also have um, our colored reflective high vis. So you've got some colored reflective options as well, which is really cool, really fun. All right, I think that'll do it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your week.